Hey coaches, what's up? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Now in today's podcast, we have Coach Maria. Maria is in Canada. She started a soccer academy in Canada a number of years ago. She talks about her journey of starting. Uh, she talks about the different type of value that she adds in her program and why she's different than other trainers. She has an awesome story. Pay close attention to this interview. I think it's going to really help you. And right next to me here, you'll see our username on Instagram. Make sure connect with me there. If you are a coach, you want to grow your business, get connected with me there. Um, I'd love to connect with you personally. And I can't wait for you to watch this interview and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We have a ton of interviews that Leo has done um, already, and there's a bunch that are coming out in the future. I'm excited for you to watch these. I hope these add a lot of value to you and your business. And sit back and enjoy this interview. Yeah, so my coaching journey started in 2012. I was a player um, just leaving university and wanted to coach on the side. Um, always had a pa <clears throat> passion for it, but um, kind of decided I was working full time and wanted to give back. So I took kind of a volunteer role, which turned, in, which turned into a paid position once I got my licensing. And then I coached that for about three, uh, two years, two and a half years, and then I decided to make it full time, I left my job, my full time job with Nike, which was a pretty big uh, move, and decided um, to become a full time coach. And in order to get the highest qualifications and to be immersed in the culture, I actually moved to England. Um, so I'm an Italian citizen. I lived there when I was a kid, and I had some um, some contacts there for working. I had a place to stay, so it only made sense to start from the FA level one um, and stay there as long as possible in order to fully immerse myself in, and decide when I was ready to come back to Canada. Um, so that took me in 20 end of uh, just at the end of 2014 um, to England. Um, I was traveling anywhere from the north. So Liverpool, Manchester, all the way down, um, down south to Southampton. Um, I was staying in Peterborough doing most of my courses through the London FA, but just traveling everywhere. Anyone who I met through LinkedIn, Twitter, et cetera, I'd message them and go watch their sessions. So um, what I thought would be six months ended up turning into a, a year. Um, and I was fortunate enough to get onto some, some pretty big courses and, and meet some, some amazing people. So when I came back to Canada, I decided to fully invest in, in coaching and be full-time. And I got my first full-time role uh, right away coming back. I was, you know, on the plane at um, accepting a job, um, which was which was pretty cool. So, and then since 2015, end of 2015, being back, I've been full-time ever since. Um, never needed to pick up another job and, and um, soccer's kind of paid the bills. And uh, just a passion to wake up every day and do um, do coaching, private training, uh, events, et cetera, that, that um, myself and now my company that I've, I've started run. Perfect. I love that. So how, how did you find, uh, w well, coaching or watching sessions in England with coaching in Canada? Yeah, much different. I think the Canadian system is, is getting up there now. More of the courses are structured like a UEFA or an FA uh, course, but um, we still have a ways off. So a lot of coaches here um, in North America will go and do their, their uh, licensing in, in Europe. Um, or South America. Um, I also took my USSF licensing as well. So I find the USSF license and the UEFA and FA courses are pretty similar. Um, so Canada is just not there yet, um, but we'll get there eventually with, you know, the success of our programs and obviously coaches coming up um, in the system. But yeah, it's, I felt going to England was probably the best experience ever because it was the it's the hardest place to be a coach and be a successful manager and the coaching uh, courses are just so structured and I knew structure was important and um, to be with some of the best um, coaches I mean some of the coaches on some of those courses are still my good friends they're working in you know uh, category one academies now etc coaching women's and, and men's teams. Um, so I knew I wanted that standard that, you know, Canada couldn't provide at the time. And that's why I went over there. So yeah, it was, it was, um, it was definitely one of the best experiences of my life. That's awesome. That's awesome. So tell us, tell us a bit about your business then. So what, what does your company specialize in? Yeah. So um, I started coach Maria soccer full time 
um, after I decided to leave kind of the youth club system. Um, I'm still involved with youth clubs um, more as a contract role, um, but I just saw a gap in when I played as a kid um, to now. Um, obviously, we know kids are not outside all day um, after school or um, at the park on, on the weekend. Um, they're locked up inside and they're cooped up inside. So something I did as a kid was, you know, I'd go downstairs, touch the ball, play, you know, outside. Even if it wasn't uh, soccer, I'd be playing hockey, basketball, et cetera. I was being active. And I saw a gap in that from when I came back to kids not even being able to do five keep ups at, you know, age eight or, or whatever. So I saw a gap and I said, how can I change this? And I basically took everything I did as a kid in my basement or in my backyard and just put it into a private training program. Um, so I launched that in 2018. Um, I just kind of, it was just word of mouth. I had about 20 kids. Now we're over 150 kids throughout, you know, five or six locations and it just, it just keeps growing. Um, but I just kind of took what I did as a kid and put it into today's, um, today's world and, you know, people pay for it, but it's the reality because kids aren't going to do the touches that they need to, to get to the standard. I always hear, Hey, I want to be a professional player. I want a division one scholarship, et cetera, but I know they're not doing the work outside. So that's where kind of, I found that niche is to come in there and be that, that role model and, and that person to kind of fill that gap because extra training, private training, et cetera, is needed. So uh, that's kind of where I started. Um, and now it's kind of launched into running my own events. So we bring coaches in from all over the world to work with the kids here in Canada. Um, coaches, you know, come over and watch the kids for, for scholarships, but it's kind of evolving. This platform's always evolving and kind of taking everything I learned as a youth player and all my role models and kind of putting it into one centralized platform. So if a player signs up with us and wants to be a professional uh, football player or they want to be get a scholarship, we can help them and give them the tools needed. Hmm. Perfect, perfect. Well, first of all, congratulations for the growth of your company. Uh, really, really happy and excited for you. Um, so tell me a bit then. So you've been in coaching for a while now. So what, what for you it does a perfect coaching session look like? Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody at first when I started, a lot of parents, um, you know, are like, well, my kid's not coming off the field sweating or, you know, uh, why didn't you make my kid run, run laps? Um, so I think what we try to do differently is we take a player, um, usually our, our players are 13 plus. So we try to do specialized training in certain positions because at 13, most players start to specialize in, in their position. So a center midfield, we try to do sessions based around uh, center midfields. We do a lot of striking clinics. So in there, we'll see a lot of forwards come in or, or wingers or even attacking center midfield players and goalies. So that way we could shoot on them. So we try to do specialized training for our younger. We just do like the ABCs, like abil uh, agility, balance, coordination with technical training that they're not getting at their team. Um, because at team practices, you know, I, I, I coach in, in youth academies still. Um, so, so do my friends or I'll go watch a session and they're not doing ball mastery or they're not you know uh doing stuff like you know thousands of touches on the ball so we kind of come in and really focus and 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 hone on those skills compared to team skills because all these players who come to us play at clubs all across um all across toronto so a lot of them just need that extra individual stuff that yes they should be doing in their backyard but we all know they're probably not there are some that do but the majority aren't um, outside touching the ball as much as they would like. And obviously the weather doesn't help here to be in all the snow all the time in the freezing cold. It's actually nice now, but um, most of the time we're cooped up inside. Yeah, awesome. So so let me take you back to where, when you first launched your, your business. How, how did you get your first client and how many you currently, well, you did mention you're, you're training about 100 plus. But tell us a bit about how, how you got your first client then. How did that, that come about? Yeah, so it was just some players that I had worked with before I left for England. Um, some players that I had kept in contact with from England, some parents. And I just said, hey, you know, I've left the youth club system. Um, you know, I was working for an MLS club um, at the time. And I just decided to leave it to focus on my business. And I said, if your child ever needs extra training, you know, I'm, I'm free. So I started sessions in, in a park 
kind of just not paying for a field and just kind of showing up at a, you know, school pitch that's pretty uneven and just doing some training to evolving from there, you know, that player liked it and then told a friend and then, you know, 10 or 15 friends later, I needed a bigger space. And then, you know, finding, finding some, some time, um, indoor time and some, some time where I knew it was mine was, was mm-hmm. difficult at first, but that's kind of how I got my first client is just kind of the relationships I had built before I became a professional coach. Um, and just keeping those, uh, good relationships when I came back to further develop those players that I started with when they were younger. And then I came back three, four years later, and now they're in high school and they need extra specially specialized training. Mm-hmm. Love that. Love that. So what do you look for when you, when you bring on a new client into your, into your program? Yeah. So we go through just a basic assessment, um, something I just created. So um, we ask a player to come in and we try to do a one-on-one session with them. Sometimes it is difficult to manage to get a player one-on-one, but we try to bring them into a training and just kind of go through different categories um, for our players that we start uh, with age six, age six to 12, we'll work on the basics, shooting, passing, dribbling, um, coordination, balance, et cetera. Um, and we'll just kind of tick off where they are and give them a progress support and be as upfront as possible with the parent. And again, a U6 to U12 player, again, they're not looking like they're a messy at this point. Um, so we really try to work with them on a plan away from our training because they're seeing us one, one two times a week compared to um, how much time they have away at home, et cetera. Um, and then anyone 13 plus for us, we put them in a session with our players that um, we currently have in our program. Um, we now have full-time players with us. We have part-time players with us. So we'll throw them in a session and just kind of evaluate their level based on those players we have. Um, so it's just kind of just giving them an overall um, overall assessment and then obviously speaking openly with the parents. So we'll set up a 30-minute call after the session on Zoom or over the phone or in person and just kind of tick off the points where, hey, Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you come back. Not everybody does. It's just the reality of it. Um, but these are the things, in my opinion, a player needs needs to work on. Sometimes the harsh reality is, is if you're really upfront with a player and they don't really like the feedback, um, it's fine. But, you know, obviously there's certain people um, doing this in, in, in Canada that really know what it's like to get a player to the next level. So I think I'm pretty honest with the players as to where they are and where I think I can get them. That's awesome. So something we work with coaches in our program is adding value away from the field. So what's what's a couple of things that your your company does in order to provide value for for the families you work with away from training? Yeah, so I think, you know, obviously with COVID, um, when the world shut down, um, we had a tournament planned. It was going to be our first one where we we selected 18 female players and our business is mainly females. We do have males in our, in our program, but it's mainly female players. And we selected 18 players at a really, really high standard. This was probably one of the best classes of players I, I've wor- I worked with. They're all at school and university or playing professionally now, but we had selected them um, to take them on like a first kind of tour of America, something I did when I was a kid um, to get in front of coaches. And it was planned for April, 2020. Um, so obviously no one knew, no one knew COVID would be this long. I thought it was going to be two weeks. So, you know, it was, it was trying to, we hand selected these players. We charged them a minimum fee and said, Hey, we're going to get on a bus. We're going to go and see all these schools, get you in front of coaches, et cetera. Um, and then it obviously didn't happen. And, um, when it didn't happen, I was gutted. They were gutted, but I just said, how can I give more value to players and, and kind of expand my network? Um, my Instagram kind of took off. It went from a couple thousand followers to I think we're at 16,000 now. Um, and it was just building, um, a network and offering it for free. So we offered free training two, three days a week. Um, and then we offered free one, it was either two days a week, uh, Tuesday and Sundays, we interviewed coaches, um, mm-hmm. professional players, whoever we could get a hold of on Instagram or on zoom. And we ran these, these sessions. So now that COVID's over. We're still continuing to offer that for our players. So we're bringing in coaches um, and talks. Um, We brought coaches from England over to see our players. We travel a lot now that the borders have opened to the United States because we're so close. 
and it's just offering these extra things that maybe a club can provide or a club does provide, but it's so rare that we offer it all the time. I mean, since the borders have opened in December, we've been to the States twice, going back another two times, um, and then a trip to England planned in, in July. So that's kind of the extra value with us is, hey, we can help players get to that next level if, if the club is okay with it. And some clubs are, some clubs aren't. But if your club's okay with it, then these are the opportunities for you. We also have a WhatsApp group chat, which I think started with a couple players on there because all the girls in high school were like, oh, I don't have WhatsApp. But now over 200 players in this, in this chat. And we send out extra content, extra sessions, and these trips that we do plan for these players. That's awesome. Fantastic. So apart from COVID, which was obviously an obstacle for yourself and for many trainers, coaches who have businesses, uh, so tell us about your biggest obstacle since when you started. Yeah, so like I mentioned here in, in Canada, um, indoor facilities are a must in order to keep, uh, keep going throughout the winter. I mean, you're probably inside. If you're brave enough, you'll stay outside till middle of November and then it'll get really cold. Um, so from November to, I would say, around end of March, early April, you have to be inside. Um, so to find indoor spaces is very tough. I mean, you're not getting a 3G 11 v 11 pitch to run your sessions. I mean, um, most of the players who probably will listen to this, because I always send uh, players uh, podcasts and, and stuff to listen to, will laugh at some of the spaces that we've provided for them. You know, little 10 by 10 rooms, um, you know, even sometimes smaller or in people's backyards or in, in basements, garages, wherever we could get time through the winter we would train. So finding indoor time was probably the biggest challenge. Um, we have a great relationship with a couple um, indoor facilities now, but just finding time to train and get prime hours because, you know, we were getting 10 to 11 PM and we had some kids that, you know, obviously are in bed at that time. And usually I am too, but it was just the times we could get, or we're training at seven in the morning just to fill those time slots. And it was a big shout out to the parents getting up and and staying late to drive the players there. And now we're kind of on a consistent basis where we train Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then usually one day during the week. And we have those good hours where people are sacrificing sleep or, you know, waking up early you know, and, and kind of sacrificing their, their home life because everybody needs a balance. So that's kind of been the biggest challenge is, is indoor facilities and any coach here in, in Canada or, or working in, um, in a city where you do have, a pretty long winter we'll, we'll struggle with. Yeah. So do you guys have your own facility now or is that something you're working towards? That's the plan. Hopefully um, it was, it's it, obviously uh, uh, February and March of 2020, I'd taken a trip to uh, England, January, 2020 and just felt kind of re-inspired. And, and I went and met all my, my friends that I'd done my courses with and um, kind of asked for that for my 30th birthday gift. And um came back in February, March and said, I need my own space and started to look, um, had a couple offers on some places and then obviously pulled out of those offers because, you know, COVID happened and stuff. So that's the plan is to get my uh, uh, own facility. Um, that's the dream. I'm working with a lot of um, parents that kind of want to invest in it as well, because not only is it a good investment for their, their child, but it's a good investment overall um, for, um, parents or investors across uh, Toronto and, and kind of the greater Toronto area because uh, people need time and uh, people need rentals. And there's people like me starting off with private training where I hope I could provide a facility for them one day, like so many other people provided for me. So that's the plan. Um, that's kind of next in the works um, for my company and kind of the next step is finding a space. Perfect, perfect. So where, where do you see private training going in Canada? in the next two, two to five years then? Yeah, I think we're going to get a lot more kids playing, playing, playing soccer and starting off at a young age. I mean, my two little godsons, um, they're six and eight. They're big basketball players because the Raptors were so good. Um, and now they're like, hey, Team Canada, you know, Alfonso Davies, jo uh, Jonathan David, et cetera. So now they're starting to take a big interest in it. And I think a lot of kids now with Canada qualifying on the men's side for the World Cup and then the female um, team winning the Olympics, I think it's spiking registrations in soccer. I know soccer here in Canada took a massive hit 
during COVID, which I'm sure happened all over the, the world, but especially here in Canada, it's a huge hit. But I think those teams winning you know, have inspired the younger and younger youth players coming up. Um, so I think players are messaging me or other trainers to say, hey, my son or daughter wants to get into soccer. They've never played before. Do you provide extra training for beginners? And somewhere where we didn't kind of do before where we weren't working with beginners we only work with kids who are playing within academies is something now we've opened up um, and it's great because a lot of the players who trained with me since 2015 2016 who are still in my program um, are now coaching for me which is great to, for them wow. to go with me and kind of see the way I run things to now taking over and running um, a business and having their own clients under them which is which is massive so um, I think it's only getting bigger here um, more people are doing it more people are seeking um, private training which is great and more people are now signing up instead of one or two sessions through the year they're coming once a week um, or whatever they can commit to I think is is pretty pretty cool awesome awesome so what would you say to another Canadian coach or trainer that's watching this this interview and wants to start a business like yourself but hasn't yet done it what what's the what's the one piece of advice you would give him or her yeah um i think um make sure you're fine with um the off times to work most kids play here from monday through thursday and then once on the weekend so you give up a lot of time you give up your nights you give up your weekends so that's mm -hmm. the first step is is the change in a schedule for a coach um in order to adjust for um, you know, private training and being able to provide uh, a good service away from their team training. Um, so that's number one. I think a second one is make sure you have clients that can sustain it and find a good price point um, that's going to going to work for you and and obviously covering costs, insurance, uh, shirts, etc. Um, but I love taking on uh, coaches. Some coaches come to me and I know they're starting their own business and I'm fine sharing my resources. Um, and helping out and if I can't provide for players which I can't accommodate all these players we always get I hope one day if they do start their business I can pass them off to another coach or trainer that I really see value in their session but I also think too there's a big change from being a player to a coach and some mm -hmm. people struggle with that um, you can't be a player and then coach as well you have to be able to separate the two um, which is kind of the main advice I have for coaches that come in with our program or advice I always try to give as, as much as possible is, you know, you have to hang up your boots and, you know, put on your, your runners and, and be a coach and really focus on those certain aspects of it um, because there's so much more to coaching than maybe a player sees. And from me as a player to now being a coach, I'm like, wow, what my coach had to go through. Um, I kind of understand that journey um, now as, as a coach. So I hope players who want to get into this, especially um, at a high level like, like myself and so many others, um, just kind of realize those differences. Awesome, awesome. So t tell us a bit about your, your current sales and marketing process. How do you guys sell and, and market your business? Yeah, so um, we do a lot of emails through MailChimp. Um, I think we're over 3,000 people on those, those emails. We try to send them out weekly or monthly, depending on what we have going on. Um, so we send out what's planned for the season. So we send out four big ones through the season. So what our winter looks like, our spring or summer, and our fall programs will look like. Um, we've created different WhatsApp groups. And then the ma majority of our sales... Um, and kind of marketing is through Instagram. So we have uh, four or five different platforms on there. Um, we have one around recruiting. So if you want advice on recruiting or how to be recruited, we have a platform on that. We have a, a platform for our, our company, our side company called Project 3, which is elite female and male players who travel with us to the United States. Um, and then we just kind of have the, the main one, mine, uh, Coach Maria Soccer. And we just kind of put out there weekly sessions or we do a lot of pop-up clinics now that the weather has gotten so good this year and COVID's kind of over we weren't planning anything in April and now we can be outside again fields have opened up um, and the mandates are kind of gone so we've offered a lot of like pop-up clinics so a lot of our our players follow us on on social media 
Um, and then we send out emails um, when we can. So those are the majority of our, our two. Um, and it's just trying to lock down a player and say, hey, give me your email or give me your phone number. I'll add you to this group. And then just kind of sending out sessions um, weekly or, or daily for them or just any kind of content. And then them seeing it and then coming back to your sessions is important. Awesome. So to talk to us a bit about how you onboard players. So if I'm a parent and I want to join your, your program, what's the steps you guys take? Do you, do you have evaluation sessions? How does that work? Yeah, we have evaluation sessions. Um, we get a lot of players and it, and it differs. We get a lot of players who, who need help with recruiting um, is our main one. So that's kind of the main business. We do a lot of coaching at night, but during the day we help a lot of players be recruited. So a parent will call me and say, my daughter or my son wants to play soccer in the United States or play soccer here in Canada or go abroad. I know you specialize in that. I heard from a friend of a friend or I saw your, your um, Instagram. And so we'll help them a lot with that side is the recruiting and kind of our platform and how we kind of do things. And then in regards to private training, like I said, um, we have evaluations for, for players. We'll send them the evaluation before, just kind of jot down some points. And then after the session, sometimes it's not right after because usually as a coach, we're back to back to back. We'll set up away from the session, a 30 minute call within that next week to kind of go over, okay, um, you know, Johnny, you did well in shooting, but you know, your left foot's weaker than your right. This is what I would suggest to do away from training. Um, and if you come with us, we're really going to specialize on that left foot, um, et cetera. And we'll just kind of work through us a uh, plan for them. Um, and we try to get through to the player depending on the age, because um, parents are really involved, which is great. But at the end of the day, the player needs to kind of hear that feedback as well and kind of get their thoughts um, because they were on the field during that session instead of the mom or dad or uh, mm -hmm. guardian or, or, you know, friend kind of watching to the side. We really yeah. try to focus on the player and making sure their needs are met and then any feedback they have for us, they'll give it. Most of them don't really say much on that call. They'll say, yeah, it was good. No, I really enjoyed it, but we'll try to get some answers out of them and really inspire them to keep coming back and uh, keep working hard in order to get to what goal they have. If it's mm. scoring, scoring a goal with their weaker foot or they want to be a professional player, we kind of take every kid um, individually and work with them within what they want out of, out of soccer. Mm. Perfect. So a question a lot of coaches ask us when with their businesses, should I, should I charge for eval sessions, evaluation sessions? So do you guys charge or, or is that, is that free? How does that work? Yeah, it's free. The first one is, is free. So we, um, we give them a session um, and it's just kind of some points throughout. Uh, so those are just like five main, main categories. And then there's three or four sub points depending on their age that we kind of just check off. Um, and again, we're not giving them fours or, or fives all the time. Um, and those are our highest scores because not every player is going to be a five. And rarely do we give out a five because I think everybody, not only in, in soccer, but in life needs to work on certain, certain things. So yeah. we don't charge for them. The only time we do charge, if we go and evaluate a player for a scholarship. Um, so if they need help with recruiting and they say, hey, I'm playing on a Tuesday night at 9 p.m. at this field, can you come and watch me play and then give me some points? We charge for that. But in regards to private training and taking on a new client, we give that session for free, um, that evaluation for free um, to, to a parent and a player in that 30-minute call. Um, and again, like I said, we have a good uh, turnaround rate of getting players on board, but I've spent maybe even longer than 30 minutes uh, speaking to some parents and kind of giving them some feedback and they've never returned, which is, which is fine. But I know our, our success ratio on, on turning around players is pretty high that I know I can afford to take those players on that I already know probably won't join or just based off the tone of a parent or a player, they might not come on board. But again, um, I was given so much free advice back in, in, in me coming up as a youth player that I'm fine doing that because at the end of the day, if I see them on TV, um, and I know even if I spoke to them for a couple hours or met them for a couple hours on their journey, I feel, you know, a little bit of a, a tap on the shoulder saying, you know, I'm glad I had a, maybe even a small impact on this player's journey. Yeah, love that. Perfect. So last question for you then. 
where do you see coach Maria Soka in the next five years from now then? Yeah, hopefully uh, still doing the, the same thing, having a own facility. Um, this year we've taken on, on teams as full time. So again, we've, we've started private training. Um, we were training players who played for so many different clubs. And then it was an approach from some parents to say, why don't you do this full time? Um, and it was just uh, kind of worked out for this year. Um, had a lot of time to plan it um, and with some parents and really put together a structure. So it's taking on players on more of a full-time role um, to have an impact on them. So it's doing that and then having, you know, an own facility and then just keep going from there as many players as we can get scholarships for or help them get um, professional contracts, et cetera. Some players decide, hey, it's not for me. And we have a lot of players in high school kind of contemplating staying in, but we'll give them a job on, in social media or refereeing or being a part of the game in, in some capacity. So we just want to see as many of our players stay in soccer as possible. And uh, whatever that allows us to do and help them out with, we'll, we'll help them out. And we've helped players, you know, become admins at clubs um, or full-time referees, which is fine um, as long as they're staying in the sport because – I mean, I can't believe still sometimes I wake up and, you know, I tell people all the time I wake up and my full-time job is soccer and people always ask me, oh, you get paid for that? Oh, you're not volunteering, but, you know, to be as successful and, you know, to come back from England, I always say this, I had no money. Um, I was living in a hostel to now owning my own car and my own home, I think is important for, for people to understand where it could take you um, if you do it the right way. Perfect. Love that. Perfect. All right, Maria. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing your, your journey, your story with us. And um, if there's any coach that is inspired and there will be by, by your story, by your business, your journey, how and what is the best way to get in contact with you or follow your, your company? Yeah. So the best way is through Instagram. Um, it's at coach Maria soccer. We post twice a day, uh, daily content, um, players that we train, sessions that we run, um, motivational quotes, um, upcoming events that we have. Um, uh, my number also is on my, my social media platform um, that, you know, you could get a, in touch with me, no problem. But that's probably the best platform to reach out for me. Um, I'm pretty good at answering my, my DMs. Some days there's you know, crazy amounts in there, but I try to sift through them as much as possible. And I have a good team to help me sift through those, those DMS as well. Um, so yeah, just shoot me a message. Um, again, I don't mind during the day talking anything, anything soccer. So yeah, that's the best way to kind of get a hold of me. Perfect. And what we'll do is we'll add that to, to the bottom of the video so people can, can check, check those links out. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me and good luck to all the coaches out there. Perfect. All right. Well, take care and good luck with everything and hope to, to connect with you again in the near future. Awesome. Thank you.